Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones. We've just entered a tournament, but don't worry. We do have a war situation on our hands. Yes, we're not going to do a huge amount of tournaments. Because, you know, usually if we are at war, there is going to be a much better way for us to gain... Ooh, -hoo, hello. For us to gain renown. I was going to say, uh, yeah, I have no bow skill whatsoever. So I'm going to have to close the gap here. This is going to be a bit harsh. Oh, thankfully. Okay, thankfully this... No, no, no. We're, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. Whew. That was actually a little bit careful. Yeah, that was a, a, bit, uh, a bit touch and go right there. I'm not particularly pleased about that, to be honest. Anyway. Now, uh, obviously there is war on the, at the moment. And I haven't had an opportunity to go back to Dothraki territory. And so... I haven't had the ability to change my armor just yet, but I will be changing my armor uh, to something a little bit more thematic. I actually just completely ignored that particular um, that particular facet of the theme that we're currently going for, and uh, sorry about that. That was not actually intended. I was just having fun, I guess, and I just forgot about it. So you know, that was that was basically it. There was, uh, there was no, you know, I wasn't doing that on purpose <laughs> or anything. Anyway, hopefully we can actually get some decent stuff to go along with our Dothraki fellow here. Wow, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a tear right now. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what's actually going on here. These fellows just, what? Okay, they just crumpled. They just crumpled before us right there. Um, yeah, the, the reason why I actually remember that even right now is also the fact that um, we're getting some very nice shoulders. How did that guy block my attack from behind? Did you see that? He literally blocked my attack from behind. That is kind of weird. Not entirely sure how he was able to do that, but okay. Uh, weird hitbox right there for a second. Otherwise, there we go. We're through to the final round. And Mr. Mr. Black Balak right here is going to hopefully not murder us. I do not want the Black Death, please. Thank you. That would be a very painful, painful way to go. Okay, we should be fine. He's not really attacking because, let's face it, <laughs> the AI is way too defensive and they're just going to stand there, you know? They're just going to stand there and sometimes they'll attack, but most of the time they're just going to stand there and let you wail on them until their shield breaks. But this time around, no, we were actually able to do something. So, that's quite nice. Anyway, so, heavy wall of pauldrons. Let's take a look at my inventory right now, because I'm actually not entirely sure if I have any Dothraki armor actually, you know, on me right now. Because maybe I do, and, you know, then, then that's actually, you know, uh, no. No, as you can see, I do not. So that's unfortunate. But we do have Hodor here, obviously. And I do need to get him a two-handed. Don't worry. I do need to get him a two-handed. I mean, he has some amazing skills in basically every single attack weapon. So pole arms, one-handed, two-handed. And, you know, he's going to be very good with basically anything that we provide him. But I don't really have a huge amount anyway. So, yeah, that's going to be quite funny. Anyway, so, yeah, we are now at war against the Valantines. Ah, hello there. Oh, this is this is a new event as far as I'm aware. A messenger approaches your party with a look of concern on his face. My lord, he says, I have great news of great import. Great news of great import? That's not what I said, but I'll say it anyway. It is said that Stannis Baratheon has turned to a red priestess of R'hllor for aid in his bid for the Iron Throne. The rumors say that she wields great power and has convinced Stannis to resort to dark magic to defeat his own brother, Renly Baratheon. The messenger's words leave you with a sense of unease. You have to make a choice. Will you attempt to intervene and put a stop to Stannis' actions, or will you sit back and let the events unfold? The outcome of this conflict may have far-reaching consequences for the realm. All right. Not entirely sure if that is time-based or whether that is just because we're getting close to... Um, Valantis territory. I literally have no clue about that. What I would love to do, though, is fight this guy. If we can fight this guy, I am going to be overjoyed because fighting him is literally going to provide us with absolutely Oi. incredible experience. Oh, we could even duel him, but I don't really want to do that because, well, dueling him, first of all, is going to be uh, depriving a lot of our forces of experience. I don't really want to do that. 
Okay, um, so yeah, what we're actually going to do is I'm going to switch myself over to the melee. Um, because even though we do have a lot of horse archers at the moment, these horse archers are not Our actually going to be that effective in comparison to the melee cavalry. So I want to try to provide my bonuses to them. Hopefully that's going to work out quite nicely for us at least. Now these guys, they're going to be very... Okay, I was actually going to say, they're going to be very uh, difficult to kill, but uh, no, apparently they are not difficult to kill for some unknown reason. <laughs> I have no idea why they were so simple, but I guess this guy is a minor faction, right? He is a minor faction or something like that, so I guess it is to be expected that he's not going to be fielding the most powerful units known to exist. So, yeah, uh, I would love to be able to kill some, though, actually. Uh, all things considered, there we go, there we go, getting getting a couple of kills now. And we do have a couple of skirmishers as well coming in here too, so I'm, I'm pleased about that. And if we can, I would like to start using my Arak just that much more as well. Bear in mind, I think that is a one-handed weapon, isn't it, or something? So I should probably put some focus points in that. go that was indeed it not too bad we did end up losing three troops though i'm actually quite surprised about that but i guess we shouldn't really be considering there are a lot of ways that you know enemies can take us out here i'm actually thinking right now that maybe we should just let this guy go because he's a mercenary i don't think it's really going to give me much if i ransom him or anything but it is going to give me a huge amount of charm skill right there too so i'm pretty happy with this and we also have the ability to persuade a bunch of these slavers to join me obviously this is the point these guys aren't actually going to be forming any kind of lasting foundation for our army because they are inherently well well pr pretty clearly they're only going to stay at tier four so they're not going to be exceptionally powerful and we do have a very large army coming in here are we actually going to see a battle against the two of them that's the question. It seems like maybe yes. Oh, no, they, they actually want to fight me for some reason. Ah, we got another army coming in. All right. Uh, Malakwa is attempting to attack me as well. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd like to fight these right. guys. Um, this is going to be actually very difficult. So <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if we could pull this off. Let me actually just see here. This is indeed a one-handed sword. So, yes, I will be specking some focus points in one-handed going forward because I would like to be able to use an Arak which of course is thematically accurate to what Dothraki use so I will be doing that and uh yeah so don't worry about that we're going to be you know switching things up as soon as I have the opportunity to do so I will go back to Dothraki territory and try to you know get myself outfitted in some nice Dothraki focused gear and you know try to Trying to be a little bit more accurate to the uh, to the source material because let's face it, you know, wearing heavy armor, not really. But as I say, I, I literally just got carried away because I was super super pleased that I even found something like that. So I was I was just very happy basically, <laughs> and that was that was it. That was it. That was the only thing. I wasn't thinking about anything else. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, we might be able to get some really nice skill right here. Oh yeah. That's what I like to see. Unfortunately, we don't have a significant amount, as I say, of focus points in one handed. Otherwise, I'd probably be using that right now. Let's kill that. Yeah, there we go. Take out the knights. The knights are the things that are going to be doing the most damage, friends. So let's try to eliminate them as best we can. This guy. Oh, no. Oh, this guy's the. Oh, that's the leader. That's the leader. We should eliminate him. There we go. Okay, he's dead. Nice. Wow, he's doing some massive damage to me as well, this fellow. I actually wonder if I was wearing Dothraki armor, would, would I be dead now? That's the question. Maybe I would. I don't know. But I guess there therein lies the challenge. A Westerland's champion as well. Yeah, but obviously we knew we were going to be suffering quite a few casualties at the hands of these fellows because they just had many more troops. 
than the previous guy. And this is actually the, from the same faction. They're from the same minor faction. So I guess it stands to reason that we would probably be able to achieve victory, but with a slightly higher casualty rate, which is exactly what's happening. Now, we are indeed a medic, which, well, again, is not exactly thematic. But as I said to you before, that was not my intention anyway. I was literally just thinking, you know what? What's fun? What's fun for me right now? And I kind of thought, yeah, maybe we should play a medic. I think that sounds fun. So that's the reason. Nothing to do, <laughs> nothing to do with the theme. Even though, to be fair, I am actually using some pole arms, and I'm using, I'm using, you know, mounts, and uh, you know, I'm using Dothraki units only, and all that stuff. So, I guess uh, <laughs> if you think about that, well, then it's uh, then it's all right, you know. Otherwise, I am actually going to be looking for quite a few caravans. If I can get my hands on some caravans, we are going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. Actually, probably one of the best things that we can maybe get our hands on. Uh, let me see here. Okay, Lancer or plus 70% damage to mounts with pole arms. That's the thing. Speed bonus. Now, this does apply to slashing pole arms, which is obviously going to be fantastic. So I am probably going to be taking that. And apart from that, we're probably going to be, as I say, placing that focus point in one handed. And oh, yes, we finally got to the overall best medicine perk in the entire game, in my opinion, with the exception of the final one, obviously. But this is amazing. Doctor's Oath, probably one of the best things ever, only for the reason that it increases your medicine skill learning rate by a massive, massive margin. You'll see exactly what's going on with that. Obviously not the actual learning rate in terms of value purposes, but the learning rate in general, the usability, the viability of leveling it up is increased, well, a thousand fold by um, having this perk. It is absolutely insane. And you'll see exactly why, because we're gonna go, oh no, are you serious, Malakwa? What are you doing here? Why, why, is he, why is he sticking his nose in where it is unwanted? Why is he doing that? I, I, I really wish that he would just leave me alone. That would be very nice. But obviously he does he, he wants to, you know. He wants to interfere. Because he's running around with a relatively large army at the moment. Okay, where's that fellow? Is he is he gonna stay in the town for uh, so much longer? I mean he is obviously recruiting people. I guess I'll just attack we these pirates. Go in for an auto resolve right there. You see that? Look at that. Medicine skill, it literally just leveled up twice from a very small battle. Just literally some random pirates. And look at how much it leveled up already. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Medicine skill is absolutely amazing with Doctor's Oath once you get it. But without it, it is some of the slowest leveling ever, with the exception of engineering and trade skill, of course. And probably roguery too. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, the leveling rates of all these things are so dramatically different. I, I'm kind of surprised about that. Oh, hello. Are you serious right now? He, he has 116? Okay, that's, uh, that's not particularly good, is it? That is not particularly good at all. I'm going to have to fight this guy just purely for the fact that this is a really good way for me to earn some massive renown and some very good money as well. But we may even be facing a defeat. I don't know. I mean, you can see here that obviously he outnumbers us. Oh, Hodor can actually do something really amazing. Yeah, he can go uh, on here. Uh, Jarell has a, no, she doesn't have a mount. So I'm just gonna leave her the way it is. And um, yeah, Hodor actually does have a mount. So it's it's a little bit, <sighs> I, should, I should probably take him off the mount to be honest. I think that sounds like a, a better idea. If he's going to be staying with the infantry, that is. It doesn't really make much sense for him to be on a horse, does it? Oh, nice hit. Okay. Can we get some more of those, please? I would like to be able to do a little bit of damage to the enemy's cavalry if I can. Oh, that was a bad miss there.
Sergeants in charge! Yeah, he had my number right there. That guy literally wanted to pinpoint accurate assassinate me. Oh, well, never mind. I feel like we should be able to achieve victory here, but I am a little bit worried about the overall formation of the enemy. That was the main concern that I had going in there, but it seems like we may indeed be able to achieve victory now that the enemy has just dwindled with the amount of cavalry that they had. And there we have it. Super nice and simple. And you can see here that we're also leveling up our medicine skill even further. Now, the main problem that we had right there. Well, what, what is the main problem? Well, the main problem is that I died, obviously. That was obviously the main concern there. But we do now have the ability to capture a bunch of... Oh, no, never mind. Apparently, I'm not going to be able to do that. I mean, I can capture one of these guys, I guess. Do they have the same stats, though? No, they do not. Okay, they don't have the same stats, so these guys are actually better. Let's get the Westerlands Horsemen as well, and... Well, I, I kind of want to stay mostly cavalry for the theme, you know, the theme of the, the Dothraki, even though we're not really using a huge amount of Dothraki units. I mean, yeah, we are, but, you know, most of my people are being converted here and there. Most of the people from prisoners, of course. I would like to get the Sand Steed for a war mount, but there's only one of them. It feels a bit of a waste, you know? It feels pretty wasteful for me to do that, but I guess I should probably do that wherever I can get it, I guess? Where, wherever I can get a war mount, it's probably gonna be somewhat useful. Anyway, I'm just gonna run away from here now. Oh, there was a caravan. Oh, I actually wanted to fight that super badly. Uh, any single time I see a caravan and we have Dr. Zoth and we're a mercenary, it's basically a you know, a done deal. I, I literally just want to go in and fight that straight up. Maybe we can find another one, or maybe there's, I mean, there's some pirates here that we could potentially fight, which are going to be relatively good. Look at the medicine skill. Look at the medicine skill. Oh, yeah. It just levels up so incredibly fast. And we're getting some really nice loot from these pirates as well, surprisingly enough. All right. So I think this probably gives me a good opportunity to go back to, um, what? Why am I wearing this now? Uh, <laughs> why am I wearing that instead of the heavy Warlord pauldrons? Apparently the game thought that this is better. The, uh, the auto-equip mod that I have. Okay, that's very, very strange. I certainly wouldn't have uh, chosen to use that myself. I mean, look, literally, look at this, look at this. This is an example of what I could be wearing instead. And yet, it still wants me to wear this. This makes no sense whatsoever because, as you can quite clearly tell, from a pure value perspective, the lamella shoulder pieces give me so much more. Gives me 24 armor total and the fine, archer, fine archer's piece only gives me 15. So that makes no sense, but it doesn't really matter either way. I can... Uh, it's maybe value-based. Maybe it's value-based or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway... We are just going to be getting rid of most of this stuff, I think. That's going to be another 25,000. I'm not going to get rid of any of this because you never know. Maybe I actually want to craft something and we'll get rid of all of that. I mean, look at this. I have so much wrought iron right now. Maybe I should sell some of this. Uh, sell some of that. There we go. All right. That seems pretty good to me. And now we can make our way back over to Dothraki territory. And I might actually be able to... Wait a minute. What's actually going on here? There seems to be a siege going on. All right, let me actually go over and see what is happening there. Because if there is a siege, maybe we can prey upon the person that is attempting to besiege it. Maybe we can try to, I don't know, maybe we can try to interfere a little bit just in case. Oh, uh, wait, wait. Okay, 359 and 241. No, they're definitely going to take this. Ah, and as you might expect... A messenger approaches your party, his face pale and voice trembling. My lord, I bear dark tidings, he stammers. Renly Baratheon has been slain in his camp by a shadowy wraith. 
The whispers claim that the wraith bore the visage of Stannis himself. In the wake of this tragedy, Renly's bannermen have pledged their fealty to Stannis, who now controls Storm's End. The turn of events leaves you pondering your next move. Stannis's newfound power could make him a valuable ally, or it could be used against you, should his ambitions go unchecked. Will you hold Stannis accountable for his actions, or join forces with him to seize the opportunities this new alliance may offer? Alright, well, we are probably not going to be dealing with Stannis for quite some time. The Stormlands is no more, so Dragonstone now has um, ownership over all of that, which is pretty incredible, to be honest. And I won't be able to do anything here, so I am actually just going to... Wait a minute, let me see here. Is this a Dothraki place? Yes, it is. Okay, this is absolutely perfect. I'm going to be getting all of these guys. They are going to be extremely useful for us. Noble troops from the Dothraki line are some of the best, and we're going to be having a fun, fun time with them. I do need to get to a marketplace, though, but first of all, I'd like to try to get to another village that has a castle bound to it. Probably this one over here should be fine. Ah, I actually have no idea what's even going on with, with uh, Bannerlord sometimes. Whenever I click on a certain location, some of the time it doesn't allow me to actually walk in that in that, um, in that that direction. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if you've seen that before either. But like, for example, if I, if I click on this over here, does it move me? It did. It did this time. Oh, okay. Sometimes it doesn't do it. That's the thing. It's a, it's a little bit strange. Anyway, I'm just going to continue recruiting these guys as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't really want to recruit those. There we go. As I say, as much as possible. Um, but I am going to be getting rid of some other things, like some lower tier troops here and there. Not these ones, obviously. Uh, maybe these guys can go. And... Uh, I'm just kind of seeing, should, should we get rid of some of the caravan guards? I mean, the caravan guards, as you could quite clearly tell, they don't have that great a stats, you know? So I'm thinking maybe we just want to start sort of phasing them out a little bit. And I will be getting some war mounts from here as well. I mean, there's some, uh, it, one, one cheap war mount, which I suppose is relatively decent. Um, but yeah, <laughs> obviously, if I can... I would like to get as many war mounts as we can get our hands on. There we go. There's another one. Kind of wish that war mounts would be a lot more prevalent, especially in places that are very much, you know, specialists in, you know, mounted combat. Because it would just make all the sense in the world for them for them to have a lot of, um, you know, war mounts available to them for their own ends, not just for the player, of course, but for their own stuff. You know, it makes sense. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else can I do here? Well, I do need to get rid of some of these trade goods and everything. And uh, I, yes, I know. I know. They made peace. Yes, I did see that. And uh, now I'm not very pleased because now I am going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to do a little something, aren't I? I'm going to have to do a little something. Okay, so let me actually just have a quick look here. So let's just look and see. There's Dothraki armor right there. Um, yeah, I guess I will buy that and we will wear it. There we go. And we are going to need some Dothraki shoulders as well. Dothraki braces. And Dothraki boots. There we go. Nice. Look at that. We're looking, we're looking great. And obviously the, uh, the main concern right now is the fact that we cannot wear a helmet. Um, uh, is that true? I think it is because there is no helmet here. Um, and as far as I'm aware, I don't think I've seen any of the Dothraki units wearing a helmet. So that makes me very worried right now, actually. Because that means that if I get headshot, I'm probably going to die instantly. Let me actually just have a quick look here. No, these guys, even, even these fellows, the highest tier of noble troop, they do not wear helmets. So I will not be wearing a helmet. There you go. Yeah, we're going all the way with the theme here. There we go. Look at that. That's absolutely insane. That is... That's taking things very far right here. And certainly not something that I would have ever expected me to do. But there you go. That's what we're doing. Uh, now, I do need to find an Arak if I can. Mm, seems like we're not getting lucky with any of the things in here. I'm actually wondering whether there is an Arak available to 
Aha, there is. Very nice. Okay, yes, I would love to be able to do that. Okay. Unfortunately, it is not going to be easy. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of smithing right here. Uh, I'm going to have to do this. Just, just get rid of absolutely everything. Unfortunately, fine steel is a little bit difficult to come by, apparently. And we're going to have to do a little bit of something here. So, hmm. What can we do? Well, we can obviously make some random stuff. Uh, can I actually just randomize things? Yes, I can. I can randomize absolutely every single thing. Why do I have a tier 5 hilt? Oh, it's because it's from the special... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's from the special things. Okay, let's just go tier 1. It still doesn't select the tier 1 stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to very specifically choose that myself. Um, this is still difficulty 150. Oh, yeah, because of this. There we go, difficulty 50. I don't really want difficulty 50, so let's see if I can get something maybe a little better, just a little. Can I not select two? Oh no, that's annoying, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we don't even have any tier two stuff, so I'm literally just gonna create a bunch of these. There we go, we are now smithing 77, which I suppose is okay. And let's just get a bunch of this. There we go. And I've used all my charcoal now, so I can't really do anything about it. But what we are going to do with this stuff is I'm actually going to go and I will be selling this. Or not selling it, but you know, as soon as I get a bunch more hardwood, hopefully I'm going to be able to find some. Uh, I think maybe Draconis actually has a bunch of... They probably have a bunch of hardwood, don't they? I should probably go over there for it, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to take the trip because it's quite far and far a distance for me. Uh, oh, there's a, there's a decent amount of, amount, yeah, yeah, it's okay, decent amount of hardwood here, and, uh, we don't actually even need to look for an Arak now, I actually thought that I'd have to look for one specifically for the, um, for the parts, but thankfully I don't need to do that. So, we're just gonna do this, and then we're just gonna smelt all of this stuff, just to get back some of our, um, some of our resources, of course, and we are now at, uh, 81 smithing skills, so, as you can see, plus 100% learning rate when smithing, obviously that would have been useful beforehand, but, you know, I'm a little bit uh, unsure as to the, you know, various points in smithing when you actually get these things. So hopefully you'll forgive me for that. And we have a caravan ambush quest as well, which I will be doing 100%. This is literally one of the best quests that you can do, just purely for the fact that it is extremely fast. Really, really fast. And just for the sake of me leveling up my medicine skill, as you can see right there, another massive amount of level ups. I am going to just be doing that. I don't actually want to take any prisoners. And we're just going to take the rest of the loot. And there we go. All right. And look at that. 2,300. We leveled up our medicine skill a massive amount. We got a really, really big payday as well from that. We got some wonderful armor from it as well. And what's this? Train troops not going to be training troops that much uh whoa okay we got a lot of a lot of broken men here i was only able to get one of them in the battle unfortunately but that's all right yeah anyway so now that we have changed our armor and we we do actually have an arak available um we're Best using it so i guess that's okay um but now that we have that available i will be making my way downtown and we will obviously walk fast and otherwise we'll make sure that we attack a couple of caravans. I think that that's probably the only thing that we could possibly do. I do not want to get kicked out as a mercenary, but this is the only thing I can really think Where of to do to, uh, shall we say, nudge people in the right direction. Obviously, you know... It very much depends on a variety of factors whether they decide to do that or not. But, uh, oh, we don't need war mounts to level these guys? Oh, hello. Okay, that actually makes me very, very pleased indeed. I was I was actually very worried about that. We're just armless I thought we were going to have some huge problems leveling them um, from their lowest tier because in the base game, you need... War mounts for you got a problem. even tier four units, as far as I'm aware, tier four or something like that. And 
That is really harsh. So I'm very pleased that it is not like that in this. Uh, maybe it will be at some point, but as you can see, no, no, look at that. We are actually getting, uh, look at that. What? We can level them all the way, maybe? Oh, wow. If we can level them all the way, that is going to be amazing. I love that because let's face it. If you have to literally They're level looking for the units anyway, you know, from, you know, tier two, tier three, tier four or whatever, you don't really want there to be another hurdle that you're going to have to cross, especially Best considering the fact that war mounts are so incredibly scarce. And I was actually talking about this, I think, in another series or something like that. But basically, what I would really love to see implemented is um, basically do, just doing away with the um, with the requirement for war mounts. But here's the thing. Not in the way that you expect, because I personally would love to see this. If you have war mounts, you would only pay a very small amount to upgrade your troops. But if you don't have war mounts, then you would pay more, considerably more. Like, uh, I don't know, a thousand dinars more per unit that you're leveling up. Because if you don't have a war mount, it still provides you with the ability to level that troop up. But it also makes it possible for you to continue progressing. You know, because otherwise you're going to get stuck. And that's going to be an absolutely frustrating and annoying experience for everyone. So for me personally, I feel like that would be a very, very nice solution to the problem of war mounts. Because as it stands right now, war mounts are just, they're just way too difficult to come across in my opinion. Yes, sure, we were able to get, you know, 10 of them in the marketplace. But how long did it actually take? that marketplace to get the 10 to even turn up in that marketplace i don't know i the the, the most <laughs> the most numerous of war mounts that i have ever seen ever before in any marketplace was in the southernmost azarai town and i think i had oh this is hodor actually i've got to be really careful with this guy he might actually murder me um yeah southernmost azarai town and it was very clearly just because that has so many horse, you know, horse related villages nearby. And there was, I think, what was it, 38 war mounts or something like that? I, I'm not entirely sure now, but it was a very big amount, but that's it. And then I went there later on and lo and behold, what would you expect there to be? You'd expect there to be more war mounts, right? No there were very little to to find at that point so i am now thinking to myself that that was literally a one-off and if it was i'm sad that is a very sad state of affairs isn't it so yeah that's the reason why i personally think a little bit of a little bit of extra flexibility i'm going to assume that there is a mod maybe out there that might remove the requirement not entirely sure whether that's the case or not um, but for me personally, I feel like it would just make all the sense in the world just to make it a little bit more flexible. Not making it easier, just making it more flexible because here's the thing. What about if you are in a situation where you don't have ready ready access to a lot of war mounts? So let's say you're, you're using a lot of, I don't know, other kinds of troops. Maybe you don't care about war mounts, you know, maybe you do, you know, maybe your, your army is primarily infantry or archers or something like that. And you don't really care about that. Well, then obviously it's not going to apply to you. But let's just say that you've got a bunch of troops that are tier 4 and you want to level them up to tier 6. But you can't. Because even though they've earned a hundred times over the amount of experience that they need to get to tier 5 and then obviously eventually get to tier 6, they need a war mount. And then you, you've got 50 of these guys as well, by the way. Just, just, you know, just so you know, you've got 50 of these guys on your hands. And... As soon as you have the experience available and all 50 of them want to level up, you find a war mount and you think, oh my, that's amazing. That's so cool, right? And then you level up one of those guys and then you're like, oh, well, that's great. I leveled up one of them. And then what am I going to do? And then what am I going to do? You know, you've got you've got one war mount and you leveled, uh, leveled up the one guy with the one war mount and that's it. And I wish I could tell you that the breeder skill in the riding tree was good. 
because it is okay it is actually good um where is it now there it is one percent daily chance of animals in your party reproducing obviously this is a very very nice skill but the problem with this is that it is very unreliable at least early on for some reason, in my um, in my camel series or in my Bannerlord modded series that has a focus on camel units, you have seen this at work, and I literally have I think 78 of the most powerful camels in the game. I can sell each one for 50,000. So, literally, one camel sells for 50,000, which is insane if you think about it. And I have 78 of those guys, so it's really really strong. However, breeder skill in my other playthrough in Europe 1100 has been, well, unremarkable, let's just say. It hasn't been particularly useful. So, what can we take away from this? Well, it's unreliable. So, you can't really say that this is going to really make a huge difference to your war mount generation. I will, I will be taking best medicine, um, and we'll put a focus point in one-handed as well. That sounds like the best course of action. Um, but yes, so those are really the reasons why I personally think that having a a small flexibility to the way that units level up would be the most ideal thing. Because instead of them literally having, um, you know, a hard requirement well. to, you know, having a, needing a war mount, having, uh, you know, just you need this to be able to level them up. I think that it would be good to have either you spend more cash. Obviously, it doesn't really matter what kind of cash you're spending as long as it is a, uh, a relatively decent amount. Let's face it, you really do want to um, just make sure that everything's good with them. Someone actually told me about a really good tip, by the way, here. If you're in a caravan, uh, escort merchant caravan mission, usually what I'll do is I'll hold alt. And then I'll just left click on the caravan just so that I make sure I don't lose them. But someone told me, and this is something that I've never done before. I just thought this was a really cool little tip. So I'm relaying it to you as well. And thank you to that person, by the way. That is a very, very helpful thing. So basically, if you have a, um, an escort merchant caravan mission, what you can do is you can just click on the, uh, the town where the caravan is going and you can enter the battle ahead of schedule so you can basically go ahead of your caravan and you can eliminate the enemy before you even have any worry about the opponent murdering any of the caravan so there is no chance for them to um, well be killed and for you to fail so it's actually really nice anyway as you can see right here this is the tier 6 unit actually tier 5 uh, uh, yes this is the tier 5 unit leveling up into the tier 6 unit and we didn't need any war mounts that has to be one of the greatest decisions I have ever seen literally whoever decided on that in the modding team uh, for Realm of Thrones thank you very much that is literally such a weight off my mind because it allows us to actually concentrate on what matters, which is, well, having fun, of course. Having fun is what matters when it comes to the game, of course. You know, we don't really want to be running around constantly going from, you know, War Mount Village to War Mount Village. I don't need to worry about that any further, which is absolutely amazing because I was really, really worried about that. I gotta say, I was super, super worried about it. Anyway, so as you can see, we are now able to enter the battle before our caravan friends do. And we can now very easily get rid of these guys without having to worry that we're going to fail the task. So this is a super nice little tip. And thanks once again for letting me know about it. Because I obviously don't, I don't know everything, you know. And I'm very willing to receive, you know, any kind of information that is... Uh, helpful, interesting, fun, intriguing, you know, anything like that. Because any single time I can learn something new about the game, I'm always extremely excited about that because that makes it just that much more enjoyable. Um, but yeah, okay, so now we have to go to Illyria. So you'll see here, look at this. I just click on that and then boom, we're just going to be running along. And this is absolutely perfect because we're just going to go exactly along the line as to where the caravan is going because it's auto pathing. Obviously, we're going to use the us. same exact route. So it's extremely efficient. 
And look at my medicine skill. Have you noticed how fast my medicine skill has leveled up in this particular episode? It is jaw-dropping how fast it levels once you have Doctor's Oath. It is really amazing. That's kind of actually the reason that I wanted to um, be the medic for our party. Because it's just such... Uh, I don't know. It feels so much better for me to level it up than a companion uh, because the companion is going to take a lot longer to get, you know, get the skill points in it, and it's just going to be kind of annoying to deal with. But, you know, we can have a lot finer control over it. Speaking of finer control, I should probably take a look at my companions and see if any of them have leveled up. Because, yes, as you can see, Jarell actually has 125 in scouting now. So let's have a look. What do we want to go for here? Track spotting distance or track visibility? No, we are going to be going for tracker though because this gives us the 2% travel speed while following a hostile party. And that's definitely what we want. Thank you very much. Let's see, anyone else? Ah, yes, we have a bunch of level ups for our, um, for our caravans here. I'm probably going to be going for wholesaler because price penalty for selling trade goods. They're mostly going to be selling trade goods almost all the time. I'm probably going to get some... I'm going to get some points in trade, I guess. I guess that makes the most sense. Let's go for Day Traveler as well. And let's get a point in Social, I suppose. I guess that makes the most sense too. Um, yeah, uh, he's not leveled up at all, which is, I suppose, to be expected. He's level 19, so it's going to take him a long time to level up at all anyway. Uh, Hodor obviously has not leveled up at all either, and there we go. All right, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So there shouldn't be another bandit party, but you never know. Maybe these guys want to attack. No, it doesn't seem like they're just going to run away. So that's fine, and there you go. That's the end of it. 4,100 for us, and we did get some nice relation. So that is all I can really hope for. Now, let me actually just take a quick look here. Now... I'm a, I'm a little bit... Uh, ah, I actually just leveled up my clan tier. So that's really, really fantastic. So that means that I can level up, or should we say convert, some of these friends to our side. And I would actually like to get more noble troops. Because if you take a look here, I don't know whether you've noticed what... Um, uh, wait a minute, where are they? Elite Screamers? No, Cal's Guards. We've got a bunch of these. Um, so yeah, these are the stats of the Cal's Guards. So if I can get a bunch of these, a bunch more of these, we are going to be in an extremely strong position and I might even be able to branch off on my own if we want to do that or we can potentially just, well, murder things at will and that's going to be extremely powerful for us, hopefully, at least. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit worried in general about my own uh, survivability. Oh, I really wanted to fight this... Um, fight this caravan can I actually ah you know it's so funny I have almost an army entirely comprising of cavalry and yet I am still as slow as nothing else do I have herding problems I do have some herding problems okay well that obviously makes sense doesn't it now uh great okay well I'm gonna have to deal with that you can see here though we're gaining so much cash every single day which is extremely nice as well and I guess what I'm gonna do is probably get rid of some Sumter Horses. My herding has gone down. Um, yeah, but you can see here, I actually have 22 War Mounts now, which is hilarious. And we have a Western Corsa. I kind of feel like maybe I should change that out for a Dothraki Corsa or something like that. Um, as you can see, it doesn't really have that much difference. So I'm thinking we're probably just going to swap it out. Oh, the Sand Steed? The Sand Steed looks fun, actually. Yeah, there we go. The sand steed looks cool. It's got a much higher speed, which is the main thing that I'm really going for here. And uh, it has a lower HP, though. It has much lower HP, so maybe that is going to be a bit of an issue for us. I don't know. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I guess that's going to be fine. Do we have any Pugios here, by the way? I'm kind of looking for Pugios, because if I can do that, I might be able to make a huge amount of the really, really good weapons... And then I can just continue smelting that in a, an infinite loop and making some really, really good smithing skill level ups. I, I guess um, if anyone can actually tell me, by the way, just let me know. If you know where Pugios are in Realm of Thrones, let me know. I was kind of thinking that they would be in Targaryen territory or something like that. I mean, who, you know, obviously, where, where do they have them nearby to me? That's what I'm asking. Because obviously, if I have to go all the way over into... Um, 
you know, <laughs> all the way over here. Oh, we're actually at war against someone? We're actually at war against Dragonstone. I had no idea. Ah. Oh, I see. Well, uh... <laughs> I guess that actually makes me want to go over there then. Yeah, let's go over there and see what we can do. I had no idea that we were actually at war against them. Okay. Uh, I just thought that we were having the opportunity to attack them at some point. But if, apparently that was a... Was that an automatic... Automatic declaration or something like that? I'm going to assume yes. Anyway, we'll just take all of these. And... This is not... This, this is super weird. This this village is not tied to this castle. Okay, well that's fine, I guess. Um, yeah, well let's just move on over here. This is going to be hopefully having... Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Thank you very much. Let's take all of those. There we are. Okay. So we now have the maximum amount of troops, basically, and we are now going to make our way onward. Now, how much am I actually making from... Yeah, my mercenary contract is literally the only reason why I'm making money right now. My caravans are doing okay, but the mercenary contract is far and away the best thing ever. And hopefully we're going to be able to make a significant amount of cash. Once we do that, we have a, a lot more security in the future as well. So we're going to be able to do some pretty amazing things. Now, I'm going to have to be a bit careful here as we get closer. Aha, here we go. Oh, he made a mistake right here. He made a mistake. He went in to a battle. Sorry. That is a huge mistake that he is going to regret now. And I'm going to be going in against him. So let's do this. Ooh, I've, I've actually been really eager for another fight. And um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. I actually don't know... Uh, should I put myself... Wow, I have such terrible skills. Look at my skills right now. My perks are, are just awful. Ah, Hodor is much better. I'm going to put him over there. We only have six infantry anyway, so it makes no sense for me to, you know, put, and put Hodor on there anyway. I mean, he is actually mounted after all, so it makes the most sense. Anyway, I'm going to use my Arak. Yes, I'm going to use my Arak here, and we're going to see how we do. Obviously, it is rusty, so it is going to be slightly worse than what you might expect. But hopefully, it's going to be good, you know? Hopefully, it's actually going to be something nice for us. I mean, I'm just going to try a couple of slashes here. Oh, it seems cool. No, I like it. I think I've actually used one of these before, and I really enjoyed it. So... Maybe, maybe we'll be okay again to use it. And let's try and see what we can do here. Yeah, these guys are going to be very, mm, they are going to be very annoying. Well, unfortunately, this uh, this hill right here is actually proving to be a major obstacle, surprisingly enough. It seems to have some kind of... Um, I'm thinking... Yes, look at this. It has an invisible wall here. And that has proven to be a big issue for me. I'm actually kind of surprised that there is one. Usually, you're not going to see those. You're just going to see that big red you know, boundary to the, uh, to the battlefield. But it seems like we are having that. And, um, yeah, I'm actually really surprised that we've suffered so many casualties as well. I never would have expected that, but I think the main... What am I actually losing right now? Oh, yeah, just really low-tier troops. Okay. Well, I suppose that is to be expected. 
but I was kind of hoping to lose a lot less considering we do have some very high tier troops right now and I guess I was kind of hoping that they would pull through here but oh uh, well never mind I guess can't really uh, <laughs> can't really you know expect that considering we are actually up against some relatively high tier people look at this elite mace man wow okay yeah so that guy really knows what's up and I am leveling up my one-handed skill do bear that in mind as well that's obviously going to be a thing that we really are not going to be doing a huge amount of damage with right now and I am getting a little bit better with it at least I think so maybe I don't know maybe I could have done a little bit better but at the moment uh, I'm not sure I mean I think the main purpose of this thing is literally to harass archers, right? Isn't it? Isn't it to harass archers rather than enemy cavalry or something like that? I, I don't really know, but I would assume so. And it seems very, very powerful for dealing with archers. That's all I can say, because I really enjoy using it against the people that don't really have a shield. So it's a lot harder for them to defend against it. And I think we're done. There you go. That is indeed a victory for us. And how much are we actually going to get for this? Probably quite a lot. Yeah, 31 influence as well. Very, very nice. That is all I'm really looking at right now. I'm just looking at influence every single time. Now, this guy is actually a true vassal as far as I'm aware. Yes, he is. He is from Stormlands and we probably want to do something about him. But here's the thing. Do we? Do we? Because here's the thing. If we become a vassal... Of the, of the Dothraki, then it would probably make sense for us to try to do that relatively soon because then we're going to have the ability to claim territory and claim a fief or fiefs if we're lucky. And that would be kind of cool. But the question is, do we want to create our own Dothraki faction? I'm thinking maybe yes as well because otherwise we're going to be at the mercy of the AI and their absolutely mostly idiotic, you know, diplomatic measures that they tend to take quite often. So, okay, I'm going to let him go. I'm going to let him go for the moment. Oh, hello there, Tier 6 Stormlands Thunder Knight. Hello. All right, swapping all those out and getting those. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll get a couple of them because I think they can actually join me or no, that resets them. Ah, all right. Well, this doesn't matter too much. I'm really going to be replacing most of them anyway with noble troops. There we go. All right. So let's level these guys up as well. There we are. And there we have it. Okay. That's actually something that we should really bear in mind too. The actual amount of damage that we're capable of doing is very much determined by what kinds of troops we have i mean duh obviously you know obvious you know obvious thing is obvious however i have not taken that into account for quite some time if you take a look at my army right here i have some of these dothraki barbarians which all things considered they're actually not bad they are not bad troops whatsoever but they are definitely not going to be as effective for example as the noble troops same thing with the caravan guard here same thing with the mounted slavers i have 20 of these guys and you can see here that they are very middle of the road let's just say they're very you know uh not not so not so powerful and the same thing with these dothraki ambushes as well so the best thing that i could probably do is donate some of these guys to a nearby garrison and then do my best to try and get as many noble troops as possible into our army that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.